Hello and a happy Easter to you. Whenever you're watching this and wherever you're watching it, you are very welcome to the benefits of St. Stephen's Lansdowne and St. Mary's Chalcombe. I'm Philip Hawthorne, I'm the rector, and on behalf of myself and the clergy team, Debbie Power, our associate priest, and Andrew Avramenko, our curate, you are welcome as we celebrate on this wonderful Easter day. I'm in St. Stephen's Church at the moment, but we shall be filming in both churches to bring you this service with people from all across the benefice taking part in the service. If you'd like an order of service, uh, there's a link just below this uh, film on the YouTube channel, or you can go to our website, www.stephensbath.org.uk. You are welcome. So we gather in the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and abiding spirit. Amen. Friends, the Lord be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. We'll keep a moment of quiet before our service continues. So we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires know, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen to bring new life to our world with a love stronger than death. Yet we often live with hearts entombed in fear. So we confess all that leads us and the world away from the light of God's goodness as we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all that is good, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As forgiven people on this glorious Easter day, let us say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for Easter Day. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Jill Sansbury, 
from the St Stephen's family will now read for us. The reading is taken from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Peter has been shown by God that nothing God has created is unclean. He is then sent to the house of a centurion in Caesarea, whose name is Cornelius, and there he first preaches to the Gentiles. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed to judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jill. Now, Andrew Avramenko will proclaim the gospel for us and then preach. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. Very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus Christ, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place that they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement has seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him, while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive, and had seen, been seen by her, they would not believe it. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let 
Let us pray. Lord, may the words that I speak be the words that you want to be spoken. May the words that are heard be the words that you want to be heard. I ask this in the name of your Son, our Saviour, the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They said nothing because they were afraid. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now don't tell anyone about it. Does that sound strange or familiar to you? Up until this point in Jesus' story, Jesus had instructed people not to tell anyone of his miracles. They had done the opposite. Finally, here at the empty tomb, people are told to tell of a miracle, of Jesus resurrected, and again they do the opposite. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, fled and were silent. This Easter we could be forgiven for remaining in the shock, the silence and the isolation of the pandemic. We could be excused for finding ourselves rooted into the pain of Good Friday. We could be excused for remaining in the numbness, comfortable or not, of Easter Eve, remaining in our grief for who and what we have lost. But this year, we need the realised hope of Easter more than ever, perhaps, the hope that fills the silence, the hope of our resurrected life that Christ gave and gives to us. Hope. It was hope that emerged as I sat and prayed with the scripture readings for today, but not hope alone. What emerged was hope in the silence, because it was a breaking of the women's silence that there is some much needed hope for us today. For indeed Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Salome, did get over their shock. They did tell of what they had seen and importantly did not see. But they were not believed. There is of course hope in the suffering, hope for the suffering in Christ's resurrection. Jesus didn't die just for us. Nor did he simply atone for all that separates us from God so that we could be with God. Jesus died so that he could defeat death, so that death would be the end, not be the end, but would be a stepping stone to eternal freedom, a stepping stone to live without suffering, a stepping stone to the everlasting life in the presence of God. There is hope too for the enduring. Jesus' death and resurrection does not prevent suffering in this life, nor does it nullify the pain we and our loved ones go through. Instead, it connects us and our suffering with Christ. Not only can he empathise with us because of his experience of suffering and separation, but he absorbs it into the Trinity and returns it with the Comforter, the Holy Spirit sent to all people on Pentecost to guide, comfort and connect us with God. And there is hope in the silence that followed the sight of the empty tomb, because it was a silence that was broken. Jesus' method of working, his motus operandi, was to be counter-cultural and to reach out to those at the bottom except instead of those at the top, to spend time with the devalued and the despised, 
to speak with the marginalised or the forgotten by society. So in a fiercely patriarchal society that Jesus walked amidst, it is no wonder that he would choose to meet first with Mary Magdalene. Because when he was resurrected, he met with her, a marginalised person within a marginalised group. Women held little status or power. They were marginalised. But Mary Magdalene was not just a woman. She had had seven demons, seven demons that Jesus had exercised, seven reasons to be even further marginalised. It was Mary Magdalene's gratitude and love for Christ that kept her by his side when he died. That kept him by her by his side while he was buried. It was her love that brought her back to the tomb with Mary and Salome to anoint his body before, with spices before it was too late. Christ believed in her even if the disciples did not, at least at first. That the angel's conversation with Mary, Mary and Salome broke the silence after Good Friday does more than testify to God's love for all humanity continuing beyond the cross. Both the conversation and Mary Magdalene's subsequent encounter with Jesus were pivotal moments in Christ's redeeming work. Indeed, they were so pivotal that they were not only recorded in all four canonical Gospels, but the male-dominated and controlled church that grew up from this point continued to speak and teach of it. They besmirched Mary Magdalene's reputation and portrayed her as a prostitute, something that is not even alluded to in Scripture. But they could not silence her encounter with Jesus. Breaking the silence with voices we rarely hear amplifies not only their voice, but the voices that remain silent. The voices that are missing from our lives, the voices that Jesus encourages us to hear, to truly hear. The sort of listening that not only listens, but that is prepared to be transformed by what is heard and then to act. We've seen this recently through the horrific murder of Sarah Everard. From the silence and dis of her disappearance and death came the voices of countless women who have been subject to abuse, intimidation and fear simply from their presence in public spaces. Hope came from the airing of their pain and suffering that had been ignored or devalued by too many for too long. But the broken silence also amplified the voices that were missing. Voices of minorities whose pain and suffering remain unheard. Nicole Salmon and Bibar Henry were two such people. They are two sisters whose disappearance, murder and investigation was not taken seriously, nor were their science voices heard until after we were mourning the loss of Sarah Everard. And Sarah Everard's death broke the silence. Why? Those better placed than me say, as uncomfortable as it is to say, that Nicole and Bibar were not heard because they were black. They were a minority in a marginalised group. Hope comes not only from breaking the silence, from the voices which we then notice when the silence is noticed. Let me say that again. Hope comes not only from breaking the silence, but from the voices which we then notice that remain silent. Hope out of silence, suffering and death. 
is but one of the things the resurrection of Christ teaches us. But it is not enough for us to be alert to injustice, to be woke, as some might say. The resurrection teaches us that all are heard, that all are noticed, that all are loved, that all were worth dying for. We are children of the resurrection. We are children of hope. We are not yet free from suffering in the present, but we are free from death to be able to live life now and beyond. And with that freedom comes release. Release from the blinkers and shackles that prevent us from noticing and loving all that Jesus notices and loves. The hope is that we not only use that freedom to enjoy the fullness of life that God has created, but that we help those whose voice is missing to enjoy that freedom too. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Now go and tell everyone about it. Amen. Thank you, Andrew, for that wonderful Easter message. So let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, Sarah Dawson from the St Mary's Chalcom family will lead us in our intercessions. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Father, we thank you on this joyful Easter day for the sacrifice that your son made so that we may have everlasting life. In a year in which we have seen so many of our fellow beings suffering because of disease, war and natural disaster. Today we look ahead, reminded by the truth of the resurrection that you bring hope and life, even in the darkest of times. May we, as members of the church throughout the world, be part of that hope and renewal, supporting those who are less fortunate through prayer and action so that they do not feel alone with their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who live in countries where health care is limited and poverty brings enormous challenges. May you grant that the nations of the world recognise the importance of collaboration, generosity and compassion in their responses to those most in need. Whilst understandably there is huge focus on COVID-19 vaccination programmes, let us not forget others caught up in desperate situations, particularly those in Yemen, those protesting in Myanmar, and the plight of the Uyghur people detained in China. Thank you, Lord, for the politicians, the religious leaders, and the ordinary people who bravely stand up against such injustices. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, Easter is always recognised as a holiday in this country. Truly appreciating the importance of family and friends, we thank you that we're able to meet in small groups over this Easter break 
and we look forward to times of greater freedom and extended gatherings. We pray that we will remember the many lessons learnt from the pandemic restrictions as we aim to build a better future, not least the worth of neighbourliness, the value of kindness and the importance of nurturing the natural world. In all that we do for each other, Lord, may we do it in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A time of resurrection joy, Easter comes after the pain of Good Friday. Acknowledging that pain, we bring to mind all who are suffering in our own community. In particular, we pray for the Vospers, for Jean, who is very ill, and for Paul and for Rhys. We ask that you hold them in your loving arms, that they may know you are with them always, even to the end of the age. We also pray for Bishop Peter, for Philip's continuing recovery, and for David, Valerie, Bill, Rebecca, Nicole, Sally and Hazel. We ask that you bring comfort to those who have lost loved ones and are feeling keenly their absence especially the family of Nanette Osborne, for Tim, Nick and Sarah and their families, and for the family of Philip Seely, for Kate, Claire and Helly and their families. We remember also Barbara Cork, whose year's mind it is. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wonderful. Just a reminder, if you'd like to have some bread and wine in your home uh, to share during communion, then please do that. Stop the video and go and get those now. Uh, but don't forget that I'll be making communion on behalf of the benefits and of everybody watching. Now we come to our peace. Jesus stood in the locked room with his fearful disciples and said, peace be with you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Be present, be present, Lord Jesus Christ, and make yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Friends, the Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. And in this season we praise you mostly because you raised Jesus gloriously from the dead by the power of your generous love. He has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again he has restored us so that we might live in the fullness of eternal life. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the promise of God's unfailing love, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So God of all goodness, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and peace, kindness, compassion and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Stephen, Saint Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Using the words that Jesus taught us 2,000 years ago, we pray with confidence together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ broken for you.
blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. So we pray together. God of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with new and abundant life. And the blessing of God Almighty, our Creator, Redeemer, and abiding and kindly Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all you love, pray for, miss and remember in this resurrection moment and for always. Amen. Being wonderful to celebrate together. This is the first time I've presided at communion this year because as you probably know, I've had long COVID. And I want to thank Andrew and Debbie especially for all the work, the fantastic work they've done in keeping things going so well here uh, for the th first three months of this year. And also to our wardens and everybody in both churches for all that they've done as well to make our churches clean and open and safe and th to make sure that everything has run smoothly. So thank you to you. Have a wonderful day today. Um, we have in our gardens at St Stephen's and at St Mary's uh, a Stations of the Cross installation which will remain in place until the end of Easter Monday. So do go and visit that. Bless you. Let's sing another great Easter hymn together.
Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a really great Easter.